yeah, 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 oh yeah, dale, yeah, ay, yeah, ay, ay, reality, oh yeah, the life we live right now is all about the money, so what you gonna do when you ain't got no money, your foreign cars and all the bitches back they won't leave you, the podcast. Oh, that's all facts over my feelings, your feelings, and their feelings. Everyone's feelings. Yes. Uh, of somebody that is very comfortable around here. This is like a home away from home. Uh, I want to welcome my co-host back, the lovely, elevated Lauren Madison. How are you? Yes, I'm good. How are you? I'm blessed abundantly. Jita, gratitude is the attitude. There you go. Yes. Always being awesome sauce. Indeed. Elevated. Yeah, much appreciate your presence. <laughs> ah, glad to be back. Thank in you the again. place. How have you been since we last saw you? I've been doing good. I've been doing school, finished taking my classes, passed all my classes, and now I'm doing my externship program. Staying focused. My son's almost one. Absolutely. So yeah, I just saw he, some pictures of him. He's looking <laughs> cute as a button. And he's getting ready to, you know, start walking. And so I'm planning the first birthday that I'm actually not even like super like, oh my God, I have to do all those things because he's one. But he's doing good. I'm doing good. Just learning and in a transitional state. So I'm in a very uh enlightened period of my life right now even though it may seem dark it's going to leave me enlightened so i call it my enlightened period That's what's up. <laughs> have you been i've been, I've been cool man Just last grinding, <laughs> hitting a lot of the same corners um trying to locate and find new ones to hit been pretty successful and ups and up. downs been right here had some interesting guests some interesting topics but it's nothing like when you in here Oh, thank you. you know about. I enjoy it. I enjoy our conversations every time. I'm excited to get into Likewise, it. Yes. The, audience, the audience has a very good reaction to when you and I dialogue as well. So Yeah, I noticed that. Um, Thanks, I guys. It, we, we appreciate it. We then, love you. Especially Thanks. those that are familiar with the story, how we became friends. It's a very interesting uh, beginning. I'm looking forward to see the uh, future because I think you got big oh, yeah. things planned. And Ditto. the collab, yeah, the collab is definitely in effect. It's a lot of interesting things going on. A lot of stuff in the works. Y'all just stay tuned. That's all we need y'all to do. Just stay tuned, watch Indeed. and support. Indeed. <laughs> You've been keeping up with the headlines lately? Uh, yeah. <laughs> we going to talk about Kanye <laughs> out here. Yay. Yeah, Easy. I mean, we, I Easy. guess we'd be remiss if What's we going didn't on? just. Yeah, once well, we just get into it. Yeah. We got, um, you know, we going to talk a lot, so. Yeah, well, but, your thoughts, because, you know, my thoughts can wait. I've spoken on it on a couple other platforms recently. I don't know if you had a chance to share your thoughts publicly in uh, general what do you think about let's start first because this is it seemed like this kanye saga this this um current wave started in my mind with the a white lives matter shirts yeah i mean there was stuff going on prior to that but white lives matter well tell me something that you think is relevant that's before that that we can even paint a bigger picture um, I felt like Kanye had a lot of um, outbursts and issues with his and wife. Years. Oh, yeah, yeah, his wife too, yes. Yeah, there, there was a go. lot of stuff going ups and downs with his wife and then just him speaking out um, more directly like to the people and expressing his feelings and concern. And even when he was saying um, that like Kanye, or I'm sorry, Kim had... Mm. Um, kidnapped him in a sense and like they were trying to uh, get kidnapped him into a dot yeah there was like a lot of it seemed like a lot of turmoil and tumultuous times in their household mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden he just on his own after they separated after pete davison um and and the heartbreak and heartache with that that he's dealing with right now mm -hmm. and he's coming going back publicly politically and just making his uh his views known but a lot of people feel like he's like uh being like controversial in a sense because he's wearing a Black Lives Matter and I mean a White Lives Matter shirt. Contradictory. Yes. There Definitely you go. <laughs> controversial. But he's being contradictory in a lot oh, of yeah. people's sites and I would say so as well. I was very turned off by that White Lives Matter shirt. Yeah, I was just like at this point there's a way to speak your feelings and speak your emotions without um, dismissing the community that's had your back for so long. Indeed. Um, so I just feel like that was just like a slap in the face because, you know, Agreed. like even though you may have your opinion, which is completely fine, there's just a way to go about doing things, especially because you are a very high 
uh, ranking individual in uh, like on Forbes list material. Well, now that he's done all yeah. this stuff and and said things, he's the B now word about, no longer yeah. applies. <laughs> yeah, um, he's down to four hundred a million Measly net worth. Million. Yeah, but you know, at the end of the day, it's it's about how you represent what you're saying, and I just don't feel like he's representing what he's saying very well, in I, my opinion. The position that he wants to hold right now, as far as the activist or the the figure amongst us, I just find it ironic that when he first began to be viewed in that light, it was based upon him having the courage to be on national TV and say, George Bush don't care about black people. Right. And now to hold that up in comparison to wearing a white lives t-shirt when the statement black lives matter is almost identical to saying George Bush doesn't care about black people because black lives matter was saying y'all don't care about black people. So how do you then go from the guy that stood on the forefront of George Bush representing America, the government, doesn't care about black people, and then decades later when we got basically society kind of agreeing with that, you throw this confusing statement of white lives matter in the mix, regardless if you had some profound reason for doing it. If you don't realize the type of confusion that causes amongst the common people that are trying to resonate with a general message, then you're sometimes how you try to call yourself a genius. You're too smart. You're, you're doing things that are not effective to the overall cause. I think that's how I feel about it. Yeah, I can, I can agree with you in some retrospects, but in others, for example, I don't know if you watched his Pierce Morgan interview that he did I don't did know if recently. I saw it in its entirety, but I saw some of it. Same. I didn't watch it in its entirety, but some of the things that I was listening to as he was uh, stating, because they did mention about uh, the George Floyd comment that he also made and um he was basically saying like you know i i have been around people that make a less than a hundred thousand a year and heard their opinions and then i've been around those same kind of people but they're making millions and they have different mentalities different views he was like so it's hard for people to understand like what he's saying but he's 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 just putting it out there now because he's basically saying that nobody can really hurt him because he's willing to lose it all as well as so with the george floyd statements because what i recall him saying about george floyd was saying oh he was pointing to the fentanyl versus the knee on the neck as a cause correct of, so how does that correlate with that statement like what, what was he trying to clarify like because you, you started off by saying you kind of like don't agree and then you brought that up yeah because i was just i was just saying like he feels and now i don't even remember the original question the original uh, question was <laughs> i feel like he sends out a confusing message yes when he goes from black george bush don't care about black people and you mentioned something about him being a genius i say you know he wants to be viewed as a genius but if you're trying to do something to make a statement so profound that it confuses everyone that's supporting you maybe your genius was too advanced or underdeveloped because a genius that wrecks the ship how much of a genius are you if you build the perfect ship as soon as you put it up in the air you wreck it well not all geniuses fly straight so you know it takes a lot of chaos and what would you be able to quote about your your knowledge of him or his experience of being you know a, a public person that he's done or accomplished that would attach genius to him at all why, what would you think? I hear the term floating around. I don't and know if he it's, thinks he's, yeah. Is, is it just self? Is it just him? But I think I hear other people speak toward his genius. Yeah, a lot of, especially a lot of, um, I feel like people in like millennials and even new generation. They, what is it that they see? What I, I'm not trying to knock it. I just, I'm no, not aware. I Me mean, personally, I, I don't see how he's a genius in a lot of respects. Um, I do think that he had very, uh, he was very talented musically. So in that sense, I do think he is a genius of the musical art. Now, he has other talents, sure. I personally don't uh, like his fashion, but, you know, everybody has something different that they like. I just don't think that he's a genius in that department. But musically, yes, I feel like between the way he made his beats and the way he put lyrics on them and the fact that the lyrics weren't just like your typical day age, I'm going to have sex with you, I'm going to have sex with you, I'm going to shoot you, I'm going to kill you. It was like real thoughts in real time with not so crazy beats where it was like easy on the ears, almost in a sense of Tupac and Biggie-esque like mm. um, 
tone and sound, um, I definitely think that he was a genius in that artistry. Do I think he's an overall genius? No, he doesn't know how to deal with money well. He doesn't treat his wife white. And I feel like how he puts his family out there, you know, when they're already a huge public figure, um, I just don't necessarily agree with, though I do understand some feelings to a certain degree. Now, Kanye is mentally ill and he had, mm. did express that um, he doesn't feel like, he feels like exhaustion from dealing with everything. That was a, a quote um, in the Piers Morgan interview. Um, exhaustion and people always coming at you and people always doing things and saying things, death threats so coming upon him makes him, makes him the same. way... That's Exhaustion just what he is, said. Wait, wait, no. But you said he is mentally ill, and then you said he said he suffers from exhaustion. Yes. So is that the mental illness? No, uh, it's a bipolar disorder that mm. he was diagnosed with a mm. few years ago. I would say, like, I felt like I heard about it like a year or two after his mother and died. What is, what, oh, oh, and, and okay, and, and to say that, and that, um, just that explains what or that. No, just people think about different. his behavior. Oh, think. So with when you have bipolar disorder, there are like you have manic episodes, and then there's times when you're like really, really depressed. And it with bipolar disorder, you can have really high, high upper, really high, like you're really energetic and positive, and like I love everything, and like you, you, you put yourself on this pedestal, like you're a god, or some people can, not all bipolar people. Um, bipolar it's a psychological persons. diagnosis, yes, right? Yes, it's neurological. It's, it's not neurological. It's nothing you can see levels of with it, some type of test. I believe. If they say that you could take a blood test to uh, be sure as far as testing the medications, but I don't think there's any like sound testing that you could take that makes you specifically bipolar. Obviously, you would go see a psychiatrist and get a lot of questions asked, but I'm not a doctor. I wouldn't <laughs> quote verbatim, but I know that's the process of it all. Are you familiar with the term anti-Semitic? Yes, sir. You understand what it means? Yes, sir. Do you feel like, are you familiar with the, the, the statements that um, Kanye has recently made that has brought him into so much scrutiny? Do I agree? Or, or are you familiar with them? Oh, yes. I've, I'm, a fear, I'm, I'm a familiar with a couple, but if you want to... I'm not, I can't quote them. I was just curious if you were familiar with them, and if so, do you deem them or consider them anti-Semitic, the things that he said? Because I have heard bits and pieces, and I've been listening hard to hear the part that I, makes me feel like, oh, he should have said that. And it's hard for me to locate that, regardless of my thoughts on him. I think there was like one in particular where he was like, I'm going to drop the bomb on them or something I'm gonna like that. I'm going to go DEF CON. Yeah, I'm going to go DEF CON on, on. And I felt, because I there, I think I read a couple and I was like, okay, that's his opinion, whatever. Okay, that's his opinion, whatever. But then that one, I was like, ooh, like that one, in my opinion, I felt like was kind of stepping over the limit. Because regardless, if you don't believe that the Holocaust was real or anything like that, or whatever your views on it, like this, this is still a. A, a memory that is out there like people being uh, murdered gas chamber bombs all that mm -hmm. stuff like that so you really just don't want to step on that for the you know for other people's so defcon is directly related to the holocaust no absolutely not yeah because i heard an explanation on kanye's behalf he said that he was just saying he was preparing to defend himself oh yeah yeah i agree with that statement I'm just saying that that particular statement, can, if you don't know the context, that's what they can, can be lie. perceived as that. So that's why I was like, ooh, like I get it. I get why you said that and I get like the context of it. But if you don't, it's going to be offensive to people, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. So it's like you have to be careful, which is what we were talking about earlier. We have to be careful about how you represent and what you say, you know, being a, a head a figure for, you know, a certain particular people. Correct. Like you have to be better articulating how you, you know, say things. How do you like balance that with the understanding we're in America and it's supposed to be a thing called the first amendment? Yeah. Freedom of speech. Like, so where are we at? Where are we now when someone as influential, as powerful, as successful as him can have what I would consider his fifth amendment, right? Just trampled upon based upon someone or someone's group. His fifth amendment or his first, first? amendment. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. I was like, so, he's been silent. You're so smart. This <laughs> uh, First Amendment trampled upon just because there's certain people who didn't like what he said. How does anyone's feelings trump our rights as American? So I think that the First Amendment is a beautiful thing, but I also feel like it's a facade mm. because of the fact that, like Kanye, he's expressing his opinion. People may not agree with it, and it may offend some other people. However, it's still his opinion, and he's entitled to say it. 
Um, just like people say offensive stuff to all kinds of other people every single day and totally get away with it and totally go to their jobs and their nine to fives and work their businesses and run their companies and do whatever. And, but just because it's him and he's on this, you know, platform, which is already, you know, for people of color, it's a little bit more different than being, you know, just out there saying your opinions. But, um, do I feel like it shouldn't impede his first amendment right? Not really, because I, I should be able to say what I want to say. If I want to stick my foot in my mouth though and deal with those consequences, I should be able to take that as well. So I guess- But me- what, shouldn't there be a limited um, range of consequences that only thing consequence you should be really facing is certain people being uh, upset with you. I feel like if society can impose consequences on you for expressing yourself, then that is indeed your First Amendment right not being respected. Um, I, I hear this word anti-Semitic throw it around a lot. And, or not a lot, but I hear it at very key times. And I just, this is Malcolm X. I just want to play this and get your thoughts. This is Malcolm X. This, you see, this is black and white. Yeah. Anti-Semitic. You've uh, met many of the things that I've read about you, and you've made a mention a couple of times about the Jews and everything, and I'm wondering if you are personally anti-Semitic. No. Uh, how can I be anti-Semitic when the Arabs are semi Half the Muslim world are, is Semitic. If I was anti-Semitic, I'd be anti-Arab and anti-everything uh, else. No, I think this, that in this country, there's one mistake that the Jews make. Uh, they put themselves in a position where whenever anybody gives an objective analysis of the role that they play, uh, they defend themselves by accusing you of being anti-Semitic. And, and uh, a Negro is not anti-Semitic when he says that the, the man who's exploiting him in his community is white because it is a white man who owns all the stores. Now, is it a, an accident that these whites who own these stores are Jewish? If it's an accident, then uh, the fact that he says the Jew on the corner is exploiting me isn't an anti-Semitic statement. It's just more descriptive of the man who's exploiting him. Your thoughts? I agree mostly with what he's saying because obviously we're in different times and now we have other kind of owners of businesses. But yeah, I definitely agree that especially if you start speaking things that people don't agree with in this particular case, anti-Semitism, you know, you're going to be hit with what the majority or what society is telling you to do. The difference is, is I feel like when he was saying like, oh, about the exploiting part, I feel like we as a whole, as people exploit each other all the time so it's like there has to be well who do we as a people exploit outside of our culture outside of our race our community i feel like we just sell out ourselves i don't know we are the only ones that don't get in on the exploitation of others in this society oh absolutely not who else who do we who are we able to exploit outside of our own i mean we have our jokes i guess but no (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I think we're on a. This is the thing you spoke early to that um, Kanye is entitled to his opinion or a person. My thing is this: I haven't heard much opinion, even with Malcolm X. It seemed like they were stating facts or what they believe to be facts, things that should be up for a challenge from anyone who feel them not to be factual. So, by agreeing with a fact that was made, is is that not your opinion because you agree with it? I guess you can. Because if you resonate with 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 what somebody says and you use that in the future, that's but, still but, your opinion but, in a uh, sense. Okay, like Alex pushed the button to open the gate for me to enter here today. Mm-hmm. That is a fact. Yes. I have no need for an opinion on that. I am fully aware that's what took place. Right. So if Jews or booze or dudes, twos or cues <laughs> did any say such thing, what is the problem with me? reflecting upon it stating it observing it acknowledging it if it actually took place he didn't use a derogatory word to describe the people that he was describing correct if i feel i'm I'm gonna take the feeling out of we're gonna stick to the fact if the fact is there's a certain group of people who have had a certain dynamic when it comes to business and exploitation over or in regards to another group of people what is wrong with being aware of that and acknowledging that and expressing it. There's nothing wrong with that. And I don't understand why there's not a more effective uh, system of dialogue where that can be expressed and he doesn't have to be necessarily demonized about the statements. I saw the same thing happen to Nick Cannon. Mm. I saw the same thing happen to Farrakhan. 
saw the same exact thing that happened to Ice Cube. I grew up listening to Ice Cube say some of the most vile, vicious, violent yeah. things about that group of people and just white people in America uh, in general. And it was all coming from a position of representing the oppressed and speaking out, uplifting, and but it was vile. And I saw Ice Cube's personality and his message change as he matured and got older, a lot more successful, probably a lot more closer with members of that community. I don't know if you remember the movie Belly, but it was a time. When, uh, it's been a while. Yeah, <laughs> but but it, I do remember the movie. They up, yeah, they, it's, it, they, it just showed how, to, how, to, how the people could slide up on you and kind of curve your message for their cause when they see you might deem, they deem you too effective or what you, your potential might be amongst your people. Yeah, but yes, I told, I'm agreeing with what you're saying. Yes, I do agree with that. It's funny that, you know, we've been talking about Kanye, but it's, I, I'm, I, I, I want to be behind Kanye in the stance that he's taking, but he does so many things that make me not feel his overall persona. Right. That's hard for me to pick and choose. I got to deal with facts. When I hear facts, I agree with them. So if it's Kanye or anybody saying something that makes sense, it makes sense. However, Kyrie Irving has found himself under some a similar scrutiny lately. Correct. He, with the um, video. Yeah, the video, the, the that, video he's trying to that was uh, derived off of a book that touches on some of these subjects. So I guess he um, apparently posted a link to the, to the content on his social media and all hell broke loose. The same group of people or, you know, a version of them are putting him to task behind that. And I've kind of like paid attention, kept up with the ups and downs of how the play goes. And I just personally can feel a lot more support, supportive of him because when I view the things that he's gone through in, um, in, in, in this sense, I don't have all the extra. I've gone, grown accustomed to call Kanye Kanye. Mm. So with Kyrie, I've never been motivated to look at him in that in that in that fashion. So I would like to hear your thoughts on um, Kyrie. From from to catch you up, I don't know how much you know about it, but from what I can recall or what I can. I know he posted like a tweet in October. It like it was in October. October twenty seventh ish, like saying. I believe, like, go check this uh -huh. this uh, thing out now or and whatever. Something, and it was deleted like 20, 24 hours later, but obviously social media did its thing, and it just blew up from there. And something about it was deemed anti-Semitic, the content. Because I believe the, um, the movie is called like Hebrews to Negroes, oh. and I think it's pr uh, basically saying that like we, like, Black people are like descendants from like the certain like they're the real Jews and that the other stuff is not uh, like I don't know I I haven't researched so I don't want to quote on it verbatim but it's it's, like it's a too. documentary and one I don't I again it's like if he wants to say hey go check out this documentary if he's offering that education I sh I'm gonna check it out because. You know, he's somebody that's up there and he ha he 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 liked it, didn't like it, whatever, whatever that. Well, I'm sure he, obviously he liked it, but he, um, it moved him and he wanted to share it with others, whoever would grab it and take it in for that. That's how I view that. Mm -hmm. So I don't I was I wasn't like, oh, my gosh, this is being like anti-Semitic. But at the same time, like, again, like we were speaking about earlier, other people take it how, how they take it. Do I feel like he should be canceled and he shouldn't be playing a game because I think they suspended him now yeah. or whatever? I just feel like that's going to the extreme for just saying, hey, check this thing out. Right. Like, what is wrong with having some other form of education? I mean, they're involving, I believe, like Satanism in schools now, where they are they're petitioning to I've do that seen, kind of stuff I've like that. So, and that you know, actually. LGBTQIA, they're also having dialect and education. Uh, what did you say after the T? It's like Q QIA. <laughs> I they're adding more. I I don't know, and I'm sorry right. if I get it wrong, but um, I know take those vows. And place them earlier on and space them out to make it a word instead of just putting them at the end. You took the vowels and probably put them in the middle. You probably could make a, a word, an acronym. Well, go ahead. Yeah, I well, they did make an acronym. That's why it's LGBTQ. 
But no, but <laughs> no vowels. They can make it a word. Like oh yeah, no, I no, I get what you're you saying. Say at the end, right? Yeah. But if you put the I like after it could be like a or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's all, li- you took a yeah, you feel me? <laughs> I'm dead. Yeah, <libiquois. laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> well, I guess we'll have somebody, to work better, the yeah. Somebody, go, anybody, you go, somebody. Uh, yeah, you better go uh, trademark that. <laughs> they still, y'all heard it here first. They're gonna be all acronym like. This is a poor man's copyright. Right. We copyright that right here. Y'all heard it first. I'm gonna come up. I, I I know I play with words, so yeah. I play with letters. So the lip I'm gonna... community. <laughs> uh-huh. You're not gonna look at that. You're not. But um, yeah, saying so. Just uh, speaking on Kyrie. Um, do I disagree with anything? Like no, because just like there's people that they have their opinions about things that I don't agree with, or I don't think that they should be promoting. If if I if they say, hey, I want people to go check out this link and I don't like it, I can choose not to look, or I can choose to watch it and then have my perspective or view on it. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think people are taking so much things personal and getting in their feelings mm. instead of looking at facts and educating yourself and making yourself. <laughs> expand facts in your mind empowering. yes facts and like and if you have us having a different perspective is way more grandiose at the end of the day than uh, if, you, <laughs> if you have us believe that our ancestors all came from the jungles and were slaves and Just, beaten and ignorant then you can keep it, us in a mental mind frame but if we start realizing the facts that we come from a, a lineage of people who are excellent and exalted. Matter of fact, these people who they've been claiming us when they start, that's a threat. So I'll be, I feel like when powerful, prominent voices amongst us start saying, Hey, I realize we're not this, we're this. And they come down on them. It's because they know if that message starts to permeate amongst us and we start realizing that's empowering, waking up, it's It's empowering. And I think, you know, a lot of times it comes across improper when people use emotions to express themselves as being, because I don't understand why Kanye, when you call him genius, but he wants to go, I'm jealous. When I see the good things in this community, I'm jealous, I'm jealous. I think he could have got his point across without using the word jealous. Right. Because even- But that's a- that's a feeling of emotion. Yeah, but we when you but when you're leading a people when you try to be in front. Yeah, that's what, yeah. I, yeah, you gotta you gotta convey it differently. Yeah, yeah, you cannot allow emotion. We cannot have a nation of people that are being influenced by another person's emotion. That's yeah, how, you can't. Mm-mm. That's what I feel like. You know, this <laughs> the world is going into chaos now because everybody's acting within their feelings. Like, oh, this is how this makes me feel, feel, feel. Versus, look at the facts. What are we gonna do about it? And then, how are we gonna feelings? They put in feelings first because the key word. And the thing with feelings and emotions is they teeter totter. You have to learn how to balance that. And a lot of people they don't even know how to balance things in general. You ain't ready for. It. No, you don't. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> so you're yeah. always leaning one way or another instead of learning what that little you know in between balance is for you and that's going in the masses and so when you have things where it's like oh look i'm just trying to educate going back to Kyrie irving Mm -hmm. um like when he says this these things it's like okay well what are the facts did you watch the video what about why he even decided to do that and then you know i think I, i i'm not sure if he uh, sent out an apology. I believe there was an apology that I read, but I feel like that was kind of like, you know, you're going to lose everything. So you need to make this statement, which that's another thing. It's like, if you are going to put something that you know, what might possibly be offensive, which is fine or whatever to uh, just put it out there, either stand by it, don't delete it, stand by your stuff and own everything and then take what's to come or, you know, find a different way to say it because now it's just, you you stood by something, then you apologize for it. So what is, mm. you know, you're not standing on your own well, truth. In his, in his defense on that subject, from what I can take from it all, I heard him say this. I heard him say he became aware of a deep, deep meaning of his name, Kyrie, through from, from this documentary. He said he never even watched the whole thing or read the whole book. He only had saw a portion of it. He was impressed by what it said about his name. And from what I could gather from what he said, he posted it for that for that reason. And then so when they first came against him and saying, hey, this piece of work represents da 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 da, he 
didn't wasn't according to him aware of all that and that wasn't why he posted it so he was standing firm and well i posted it because it is and i ain't tripping on all that he said after it got such a so much traction he then went and watched it or read the book and saw the portions of it that could be deemed offensive mm. and then he revisited the apology and okay. apologized for the portion that he wasn't aware of and even that being said i don't knock him for trying to do what he could at that point but I still view the overall attack on him very similar as to if you post John 3.16 or Psalms 23 oh, yeah, absolutely. on your page because absolutely. you love that scripture. It motivates you. It makes you feel like tomorrow is going to be better than today and yesterday. And then the lip quack community <laughs> comes against you and say, you're promoting this Bible that says we're not going to go to heaven. I have been in a situation literally like that, and it was... Uh, people that were, I was really close to this when the situation happened and it wasn't even me per se. I was just a witness to the behavior mm -hmm. or the incident. And it was um, uh, somebody said, hey, come to my Bible study or like my Bible study on Zoom. Mm. And then um, someone else that I know who's a part of that community. Lip quiet. Yes. Mm -hmm. And someone that just, see, someone that just, <laughs> I already know, I caught on the first time. Um, someone else, um, we had a group chat afterwards and a couple people had expressed that they felt like they were being forced to. Um, oh, uh, give me the invitation, exactly how it came across. To, hey, come to my Zoom. I'm doing Bible study. Would love to see you there. And where did the, was there something that they had to offer them other than. Like, if I don't go, they probably not going to do it. Like No, it's just all out of, it was just an out of love thing. Come if you can, but if not, like pass it on to someone who might. And thanks for thinking of me in the second kind of thing. Not, you have to be there. You have to support this. This is what I'm doing, please. It was not like that. And there was a, a conversation had after the Bible study was over and um, a couple people had expressed um, like anger, like basically an offend and they were offended because they felt like they were trying to um, shove that down that, you know, like trying to put it in their face. Like this is what you have to do. And it was like, I had made the analogy I, I had interjected and I basically said, that's like, if I said, Hey, I have these tickets to go listen to jazz mm -hmm. and this is my favorite jazz band or whatever. Why don't you come, come watch it with me? Like, but no strings attached. Just here you go. If you want to come cool, if you don't cool. And then this person goes, what do you mean? I like j jazz. Yeah. You knew I didn't like jazz. Why would you even, you know, like, it's kind of... Sensitivity levels at all time you know, high. And once you... Uh, there was emotions that were rising in that moment. But once you took the, the emotions out of it and you looked at the facts, it was like, why were you upset about it? Like, you have to look at the whole educational, <laughs> like, the purpose. If you want to study the Bible today, because the Bible, like any other book, is a book that just has words that you can look at. And it's a study. We're studying this book. Correct. This is an educational Correct. thing. You may not agree with the terms and right. the, the, the scripture Correct. and the dialogue that's in it, but it's a book that we are studying here tonight. We're going over this. If you want to join, cool. Like, I'm not trying to shove this down your throat. Just like if you came at me and said, hey, like, I want to express satanism or mormonism uh, or uh, uh, that comparison does not equate i, I, I know uh, i'm just saying because you know that is a thing might, in schools you know, no, it, it it's an educational it might, thing but from my upbringing i'm i'm so that's spiritual I'm, i know we're getting yeah. on another level okay but, but so I, let me world enough at a point to realize in, in my, okay so it might, it might be some equal there but I, i'm not no there. okay like let's say homer <laughs> versus oh my gosh i don't know what other book you said what what, what was the first book homer like he's an author like so, I, like I Moby swear, Dick versus I like. Oh, God, Disney. I was thinking about Homer Simpson. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Just like okay, okay. studying like one book versus Hughes? another is book. That a, is that an author Hughes? Sure, let's okay. go with it. Yes, I know. There's uh, here's Hughes, Langston. but yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> he's actually a poet. A, yes, yeah. but okay, Langston Hughes, uh, my my Angelo. Okay. Poetry. Okay. Comparing one or the other, right. you may be in love with. Langston and I may be in love with Maya. However, let's look at let's study this together. Let's look at this. Now, if I'm down to look at your book and you're not down to look at mine, that's okay. However, I have gained knowledge from looking at both my book and your book and determined my opinion on that matter. 
versus just having one opinion for one thing based off the couple of things that I look from my own. It I widen I widen my view of the okay. of it. So it's a different perspective. But if you don't want to do that, that's completely fine. And I respect that decision that you make. I feel like we should operate in that moving forward with subjects like this one. Yeah. Where I, he. I, yeah. <laughs> for him to come, for him, I, I don't see anything wrong. I don't know how they hold an NBA player up to such a high fucking standard that he cannot have a thought that a certain group of people disagree with. I believe he earned his right to have a higher. I mean, he worked for it. Yeah, but I mean, he he he, he was born an American, which he inherently has the right to express That's himself. What, yeah. Like you don't have to earn that. Of course, as us, we. Well, I'm saying it. he. Like, okay, like, just like you and I are having our opinions right now, we are, and my, I'm not on the level of Kyrie Irving yet. In what, in what sense? Just like, notoriety status? Yes, yeah. exactly. But he, you know, he did basketball, whatever his story was to get where he is, to be able to have that platform, he worked for that. One way, shape, form, or another, he right. worked for that. So, and he's he's representing a community, mm -hmm. whether or not people like it or not. He's able to have that platform. It's being talked about all over. The, we're talking about Correct. it. So, you know, I think it's, I think it was it was okay for him to do that. Like, Definitely. And I think just I don't know. It's like maybe he should have watched the whole thing before he posted about it, so that way he could have had all the facts. No, and I, I think the courage. Even if it was accidental courage initially, um, to post it. Yeah, I think it's gonna take more of that in order to, to see some change. I think he affected some change because it seemingly this morning from the headlines, the NBA has been they reinstated him. Oh, okay. Um, I think he has some apologies coming, and there's some big brands like Nike that disassociated themselves with him that I think also gonna have to do some things as far as recouping him because I think he was really like uh, mishandled, mistreated. I don't think he got a fair shake. But you were talking about how it seemingly people were ignoring the facts and allowing feelings to lead. And thinking about the NBA um, and another thing that was in the headlines recently in regards to feelings, uh, Dwayne Wade as a child that was born with uh, male genitals who has expressed that, uh, has the feeling that even with the genitals, the child feels as if it's a girl. And along with America in general, it seems like um, with this subject in general, uh, Dwayne Wade and his wife, Gabriel Union, have been very supportive of this child that yeah, has Zaya, male genitals. Yeah. Zaya is the name? Zaya, yeah. So recently in the headlines, the birth mother, for whatever reason, does not have a parent say so or custody over the child. Um, yeah, Dwayne been... has sole custody. So you're familiar with the, the kind of the backstory with? A little bit. Okay. I was kind of familiarizing myself. I do know, I have followed this story a little bit over the up time. To, up to now? Yeah. So basically what I believe happened is that the mother is filing a petition with the court because Dwayne and Gabriel um, are going to change their daughter's uh, name and approve. How, the how, as, when, how does she have, how does she have, how does she give birth to a child and have to fight? What happened along the way that she has to fight for the right to have some say so in such a serious decision? What happened? I believe Dwayne said that she uh, has been an absent parent um, most of the time, and she hardly spends time with Zaya. But however, I don't know, this particular situation, I haven't gone too much in the rabbit hole of why she's not legally having like any real say so, but I feel like that's what's happening in, in, um, in today's uh, society right now. Because if you, um, I don't know if you, you know, but they, um, changed the consent for getting the, the COVID-19 vaccine shot. Um, they, they changed the consent to, I believe, 12. So now you have children that are making medical decisions before they're 18, and a lot of parents are starting to have issues with that. I just spoke to someone, uh, uh, somebody that I'm working with right now, and um, they were telling me a story about how they couldn't, they, they, the, the mother could not make appointments to set up uh, their, their daughter's or son's uh, appointments. Um, their doctor's appointment, she couldn't call in. The children had to call in. And she's like, they're like 14 and, and 12. Like, 
they they barely know how to like make up their bed in the morning, let alone you want me to tell them how to figure out how to do whatever. So it's sparking a lot of controversy about letting kids um, make that decision and not having parents in general. But I don't necessarily, like I said, I don't know the extent of the wife and why she doesn't ha like have any like real um, custody of her child. But I do definitely feel like she should. Like that's like unless you've done something terrible. Yeah, I would love <laughs> to hear what she has done to deserve to be outside of this decision-making process. Um, how do you feel? Being a mother, can you imagine your child being faced with such uh, serious challenges and difficulties and someone other than yourself being the guide, especially another female, the father is one thing you, I know you have dynamics in your life. I do with parenting. So that's probably never going to be just perfect if we're not yeah. in harmony. However, you might have to lean to certain things. Oh, that's his daddy. Nah, 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 nah. But to have a woman that is totally opposed your position on this subject, being way more involved in walking your child through this decision process than you, how would, you. Well, thinking about it in that perspective as a mother, um, love if, you, mama. <laughs> if if that, it's kind of hard because I know that's not, that's not going to be a decision for me in regards to my child. Mama. But um, if that were to have ha uh, happened, I would feel very hurt and upset for sure because that's my child. I had my child with me in my body for mine was nine months. I know people give birth before and a little bit after that. So I would definitely feel hurt. Um, I would definitely feel like in a sense, a little bit of betrayal. I'm not going to lie yeah, from, right. from my family because especially my child, but I wouldn't blame the child, but I would just be like, dang, like, you know, like, dang. If transgender is such a natural uh, condition, what is the surgery for? Why is there transgender? Why, if it's such a natural thing to be and look like me and feel like someone of your nature, why isn't that just accepted? Hey, some of those are like that. And some of them are like that. What is if it's such a natural thing? Why do we have to start cutting on ourselves? Well, what I, is it that you know about how she feels over here with your male genitals? No matter how you admire it or desire to be like it, you have no knowledge of what she feels like. So how can you claim to feel like her? So if you desire to be like her with your genitals, why aren't you just somebody with genitals that behave like that? What is the point of cutting up this natural thing? They say, God made you like this. You say, we want to be accepted. You're not even accepting it. You're trying to cut it up and, pre and repackage it. You're trying to make it something that obviously isn't. So I, I'm going to answer. Yeah, <laughs> that was a very, that. first of all, this is a very uh, complex question that you're asking. But if you want my uh, opinion about that, first of all, just like anything, this the their community is a broad spectrum some people don't mind like coming out like this is what i like I, I may be male and i like other men but i i like how i am um and vice versa with females um i just feel like everybody just like hey if i you know i want a boob job or i want a bbl or if i want bigger lips even though i wasn't born with this even though this isn't what God, and you know, a lot of people don't believe <laughs> in God. Everybody has their preferences on what they believe in. So you can't, you have to take that out of it. You have to take, you know, all those factors like, oh, this is how God made you because some people don't believe in what you believe. So you have to take that perspective out of it. If I wake up today and I look in the mirror and I'm not, I don't feel like myself. Like, for example, I'm not at the weight that I should be, right? So, but. So. <laughs> I, I'm not personally where I would like to be at, but what I'm learning in my journey personally is that, okay, like, I mean, I want to be at where I want to be at, but I know where I'm going to, where I'm going to end up. And I, sometimes when I used to, the whole process getting there. <laughs> thank you. So looking in the mirror, I, I hope you can resonate with this because I feel like everybody has this version of it, but I look in the mirror and I go, I see you in there. Like I see who I'm, I'm supposed to look like, but um, I don't see it right now. Like I can see it, but I don't see it. So maybe, and I, cause I, I'm not in that community and maybe you should bring someone that's like that on your show, but how I've 
seen it and my perspective of it is that I feel like this. I feel like I should have boobs. I feel like I should have this. And these parts make me feel like not myself. So going out to getting those things done, I feel like that's fine because that's your body, your what you want to do. That doesn't affect my day to day, whatever. My issue with some of this, and I think this is what you're referring to is in your question is don't take away my natural. There we go. Or, don't take away my natural. natural that I acknowledge and, 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 appreciate, and, and don't force me to see you the way you see yourself either. Well, that's I mean, the part that's really, uh, invasive on my yeah right i think to see the world the way i see it yeah there's and there's nothing wrong with seeing your part of the world and just like okay like for example and don't make mandate like, that my children see it the way you see it that's the yeah very, like teach everything with the facts right yeah. this is how you know there's genders there's you know and then there's what you feel like on the, there's the community it's and where feelings. you lie you know because just like it's okay for example I, another newish kind of term in the last like decade that i can recall is introvert extrovert ambivert omnivert and oh, that's how you lost me after the first two extrovert it, well yeah because okay. it because it, it was just <laughs> intro, intro and extra, and, extra. Yeah. and then as time has gone on there became ambivert where there those people are introverted extroverts or extroverted so introverts sometimes they're one the sometimes other. they're turned up, but then sometimes they want to be at home. That's and like then sometimes human. they want to be at home and then sometimes. So then it's like, okay, well then I'm ambivert. But then it was like, oh, there's omnivert now. And then it was like, okay, for me, I'm like, there's too many. I can't like keep up because there's so many other. And then it's like, okay, now there's pronouns and you got to keep up with all that stuff. And that is extremely ridiculous. And it's like, and yeah, and I just feel like, okay, like I... I am open to, okay, if you want to be called a certain thing, I'll do my best. Respect that I'm respecting your wishes, but also respect mine. Don't belittle my pronouns or like me being called a woman or me being called a mother. Recertification because, for my job, excuse me. No, you're fine. That <laughs> I've been working on for four years. And the first time we went through training, this was not included. But the recertification the, uh, a few months ago, it was a whole, it was a virtual thing. But there was a whole hour plus segment about pronouns in the workplace. And they let you, you know you got one, two, three tries of Thank me you. telling you, if I have to remind you more than twice, this can be cause removal from out of here. So they're telling you if I'm 6'4", with size 13 shoe, <laughs> long beard, Adam's apple. I'm <laughs> and Sorry. I tell you I'm not a he, I'm a she. You have to respect that. You better not let me have to tell you more than two or three times that you can get fired. That's what's happening. Yeah, I just feel like that's an extreme. Oh, it's, a de- it's extreme it's that's going to lead because, to Because, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to lead to definite fights for sure. It's going to lead to a detriment to a society that allows that to be viewed as norm. Do you know that throughout the history of the world, um, sexual perversion, immorality, and abnormal normal behavior has often, if not always, led to the fall of the nation? From Babylon to so many other ancient um, superpowers that we can recall, once it became prevalent amongst them that anything goes, they became conquered. They, they it's a weakness. Yeah, every everything can be a weakness. I I feel like we're not using our minds enough and we're just doing a lot more of what our bodies and our feelings want us to do. Talk. And we're not speaking and like thinking like holy. We're kind of just doing things. And then like after all the chaos has landed, then we go, okay, well, I guess I'll keep some of this and then you could keep some of that. And then mm. we'll try to rebuild this. But it's like, well, there's no structured planning. There's no structured like- It's because I believe we're founded as the land of the free. Home and, of the brave, yeah. brave talkers. And, and, and that freedom includes so much independent. That's, and that's fine to have independency, but you have to direct it somewhere. That could be, I mean, we used to be, a, you know, especially after the world wars, obviously, we boomed as a generation and then we fell off because we started to get everything that we wanted. And then all the techno- technological advances kind of slushed into just, mm. and, and, you know, con- uh, I feel like uh, if you tackle that with, you know, corporate greed and stuff like that, like it's just chaos. Everybody's just kind of doing whatever in their feelings, doing whatever instead of like, like saying, okay, th- this is a goal as a nation. What are we doing as a nation? And like moving on what we say, what we do. 
Sorry. Yeah, we I have just no. Wanted to do a rant. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I understand what you mean. It doesn't seem like the country is going in a direction, or you know, like, like I can't be like have an agenda. Can't project what we're gonna look like as a community. And it seems like the only time that really does happen <clears throat> is when we need to go to war. That's mm -hmm. when we become a united front. But why can't we become a united front and be the smartest people in the on the planet, the smartest continent that has the the craziest, you know, technologies that we're willing to help everybody else and everybody, you know, make make an impact for the better, make better climate, make better um, decisions overall, and so that way we can. You think climate is a a real pressing issue to our society? I definitely think things have changed, and I definitely think believe that our increase in population and then just consuming things, so many things, when it's been warned that, hey, stop doing this, otherwise you're going to have these dire consequences. I definitely believe that's happening. But I also, I'm one of those, like, I want to go to space. Oh. <laughs> like, I want to go to space. Like, I just imagine me in my little space BMW just speeding through the galaxies and the eons. That's my ultimate dream. But <laughs> that's if, you, if your imagination is that vivid and you really have that as aspiration... You have no limits, I'm telling That's you. That's why I'm like, Shit. for me, I don't, I know there's a lot of complexities as far as what we can accomplish and get over, but it starts with the mind. You have to get a hold of your mind. People are not, people are just letting their mind run amok. And mm. if you, you, it, you ha it's your talent, it's your, it's your everything, it's your soul. It's what makes you, you to a certain extent, obviously. And if you just grasp the talent that you have within and and then grow it. Undereducated and over entertained. Yes, absolutely. That's, um, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I like that line. Just levels and layers. Uh, levels and layers. <laughs> <laughs> levels and layers. Levels and Facts layers. over feelings. You feel me? Staying oh, elevated. elevated <laughs> moving forward. You feel me? Oh, my mama, mama. No, but no, that is very insightful. I feel you. Like, you kind of took me on a journey because you, once you said space, that's I'm I that, want you know that's such a ridiculous thought, right? So no wait, but go I'm, ahead, go ahead. However, you see Elon Musk and other people discussing it as such a reality and a probability in our time frame. It's like that could really be it. Yeah, because I remember as a kid watching the Jetsons and looking at that shit like that's the stupidest. And I believe that the Jetsons would take place in 2022, 2023. It's here. It's yeah. Here. The Jetsons is here in so many ways. The most ridiculous element on the Jetsons to me was the, the FaceTime shit, talking on the phone like that. I said, mm, really? Yeah. I said, that's the, <laughs> the fuck. They're just talking real. So now the, the fact that we got that, that blows my mind. And another thing is Ice Cube had some lyrics way back in the day. And he was talking about niggas going to jail, getting stretched out. And he was saying, uh, he won't come down till we live in like, won't touch down till we live in like the Jetsons. So he was trying to project that way off in the future. And it's niggas that's coming home that was going to jail back then now. Mm -hmm. And we living like the motherfucking Jetsons. They actually have these fucking drone style hover cars that can fly. Yeah. I just, they they want to release a flying car, uh, if not at the end of this year, the mm -hmm. beginning of, or next yeah, year. It's about $100,000. <laughs> yeah, they're very accessible. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. And I've also seen robotic police officers online. Approaching cars, giving like traffic tickets, and you remember the, the police used to be the robots on the justice used to pull up on them and like, and they'd go to court right there on the screen right there. So it's like if you think about it like that, like okay, for example, this is what I was going to tell you earlier when I was watching uh, the movie, the new movie Star Trek. Even though I used to watch the TV shows back in the day with my grandparents, um, they I was watching this scene where. Um, <sighs> Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I'm forgetting his name. James Kirk. He was walking uh, with his friend, uh, his medical friend, and they were like coming out of their school. And their school is like a re really, really tall, and all every building is like really like technologically advanced. But they're walking amongst aliens and and other species and stuff like that, and people of color. And I'm just like, see, we're so caught up on like little-minded things like and doing little-minded things when look at where we could be as a species and look at where we can and look at the education that you could get from that and i was just watching that from that movie like one day we could possibly be there but how do we get there we have to get a hold of our mind we have to like why is it so bad that Kyrie posted something that he found 
interesting through education and we're all just focused on that instead of focusing on how do we make a colony last not only on Mars but just floating in space so we could have a Star Trek. Oh. That's how I think. So for me, I'm like, we need to get this together. I've often, I want to see often, it. I've often speculated through the years that just in my wildest imagination that damn, I'll be like, what are we doing here on Earth? Why is we here? What's the purpose? So, and then I, I, I focused on the fact that from the time you're born, your parents put you, they, they raised you to put you in school to hope for you to somehow learn how to take care of yourself, get an income, to obtain some type of stability, security, success, life. Then you try to pass it on to your children and you live. And like your goal as Legacy. being born is just to live, enjoy, and die. And I think like, damn, if that's just a cycle over and over again, this whole thing it's just like a. It would make sense why there's wars and stuff because people get bored real quick and they need to do. No, that's no, no, no. Follow me. I often thought that us just think if you wake up every day and generations and generations and generations of people who were not created by men wake up and dedicate their whole life to a fulfilling task that other humans have established, get a degree, get a job, buy a house, buy a car. Do this, do this. This is shit. These are obstacles and different shit that humans have established. Mm -hmm. If if eons and generations and generations of human beings spend their time fulfilling them goals, what about whatever we would have been doing if we weren't doing that? And I think being about whatever our natural agenda would have been, the same way we love to travel from country to country, state to state, I think we would have been going planetary yeah we could have been in, we, we can we, we generating all this energy technology and all that just to sit here and enjoy this more I don't yeah. believe and that. it's not even that good anymore yes. like that and you have to work 19 million times harder just to get this much of and if you what, really are aware of what is actually going on as far as the planets and all that the energy sources they're not they're not infinite oh yeah so they're dying out yeah we looking at the time we've been here, the time before us, and the time that we can imagine ahead of us, that is not an infinite amount. So in all reality, there will be humans upon this earth that are going to at some point face the fact that the natural fucking elements are, and it can wipe out, you know what I'm saying? So it is very logical to believe that we were designed to explore all that beyond. It's very logical to me. Because if we started from one... Yes. Because if we're, if we're going to talk about one, to Pangea, let's just say that. We started from Pangea and then Pangea broke off. We still went out and explored the rest of this planet. And we had less, with less technology, we just I don't had. Wanna, I don't want to pretend to be smart. What's Pangea? I've heard <laughs> the term before, but I, I cannot place. I'm Pangea to... is, was what the whole world or was one landmass. Okay. So we, they call it Pangea, the uh -huh. beginning, and then it broke off, and then Africa. Well, it broke off of Africa uh -huh. and spread spread out. Uh -huh. So Africa is like the last big piece, but um, okay. yeah, Pangea. Yeah. All right, we can go. All right. <laughs> so let's just say go from Pangea and then what? Oh my gosh! Um, but I'm saying like uh, you know people they you know say they spread it from the motherland, Africa, and we conquered and went to all these found and rediscovered all these places we had to have the 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 mindset to do that and then build the technology within our time because obviously it wasn't now like mm -hmm. you know right. we have way more well i feel like we could have better boats and stuff but you know <laughs> sci-fi awesome, tv we have some awesome boats yeah we got awesome jets first of all that's yeah, my whole thing too. i'm a i'm a pilot i need to <laughs> i'm a pilot girl i want to fly in space yeah you but... do have some pretty wild like things you <laughs> like to do you said you would bungee jump too didn't you Heck yeah, and skydive. Oh, crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Get my motorcycle back and then it'll be yeah, fine for yeah. right now. Yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, um, something I wanted to bring up because we were talking about the dynamic between Dwayne Wade and his uh, child's mother, which we really didn't get into because the we, conversation. It does, elevated. <laughs> it's it, all right. It elevated as it often <laughs> does. But um, just on a totally different energy, different note, I know you're familiar with the uh, internet couple, the Latrues. The, uh, yes. Yeah. And um, it seems that... Uh, Things are getting kind of tur uh, turbulent and tumultuous in that relationship right now. 
Well, that's what it appears. Uh, <laughs> it seems like a lot of people are under the impression that it might be um, <clears throat> not as authentic of an experience as it seemed or they wanted it to seem. Or, what's your thoughts on all that? So from my, my take on this, from what I saw, um, was that um, Mr. LaTruth and Mrs. LaTruth um, got into a domestic altercation at home and it escalated. And from one side, he says, oh, I picked up this tote uh, storage bin <laughs> and I was trying to prevent you from kicking me because apparently the wife wanted to look through the phone, allegedly. And he said no. And it kind of escalated from there. And then they got into a physical altercation where she ends up on the floor or something and she's kicking her feet and he has a tote, bat, tote box and she goes to defend herself and the, her she... Allegedly breaks her finger. Mm -hmm. I was watching them argue like um, on one of their shows, and then I saw the sister uh, say that this I is. See, I saw all that. Yeah. So so, um, but from what I saw from the video, I just feel like there's toxicity definitely in that, and I know you hate that word. I, I was about but, to make that. Uh, <laughs> no, okay. Yeah, I know you hate, but no, it because it it is it's toxic. Like she, if you really, I'm sorry because I also am I am very well knowledge on DV situations because I have myself been in one. If you don't want to be around that person, if this person like legit, if somebody broke my finger, I would not be on the phone or online or whatever talking to this person. I would want to get away from this person. I don't care who you are. If you if you're willing to hurt me like breaking something and you're just going on and saying, oh well, you know, it wasn't that bad and you know you could be making this up and stuff like that. I don't understand why you're still talking to him. To him, and not only that, like towards the end of the video, she was like, "Let's go on live and talk about it. Mm -hmm. Let's go on live. Mm -hmm. Like, why all of that?" But at the same time, like his demeanor and vernacular was not okay either. She was trying to express to him, like, "Can you just like admit that this is what you did to me? You hurt me, and you didn't, you know, like this was wrong. But you're so busy trying to make it seem like this." And he's just like, "You're trying to ruin my life. You're trying to." Ru and it's like at the end of the day, they're not communicating as husband and wife, as two people, as two friends, as two anything properly. And on top of that, they're taking it to social media. So that I feel like is toxic, negative energy in general and then having other people like uh like the sister like oh i know you didn't want me to like post this or say this right. but i'm gonna do it but then you could put the rest it's because i love you but i just want to say that right. i just felt like it was just a lot of negativity like where are they going to be together or not and if they are then you need to work that stuff out um in in house but um, yeah, I just feel like it was a lot of just for show, in my opinion, because even though there was an incident that obviously took took place, there wasn't a need to yeah to yeah. publicly go public with it and continue to go public with it and continue to let it die out, let it go. Yeah, I saw something recently where he had this all red on and his jacket in the house, and they were sitting on the stairs with the house, and just her body language sitting next to him just seemed extremely uncomfortable. It's like he was being very manipulative and forcing her to be there. I look at this through an eye sight if I was watching my daughters go through this. And like you mentioned, the sister, even the, the, the portion of the message the sister played. The way he was talking to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not tolerating. Now, of course, for young adults, it's only so much you can do. Yeah. But as far as, like you say, my rapport... If I was aware you chose to speak or handle mine in that fashion, please don't ever make me aware of it. Please don't. There's no... And then uh, you ex express it to the world as if you're such this righteous, solid individual in regards to black women. And there's nothing you could do in this world to get to like my daughter... Dog. Yeah. To get my daughter to get up there and say what his daughter said. Yeah. Nothing you can do. So whether she was stretching it kind of... You can't coach my daughters to get up there and speak to me about. I'm not even with none with none of their mamas. Ups and downs, never been perfect. They stay with their mamas. We'd have been mad. My daughters would never get up there and say that. So for them to all be trying to retract and make it sound like it wasn't what it was, dude, got to do a lot more to get his shit in order because she too fine. First of all, <laughs> she way too fine for him to think he's going to be able to keep that level of manipulation over her into the future. Yeah, he definitely needs help. Like, they both do. Like, they 
need to see seek some kind of therapy psychiatric she a little bit she's out of there and Watch. well yeah i know, I, I think they're not even staying no, in they're not but it seemed like that recently he's been trying to make it seem like yeah, it is what we no, they're getting better no absolutely she's not she's not she's comfortable and it's still and if she was more comfortable like they actually had a conversation and was better about it you could t you would tell in the way that while he's talking she's kind of like mm, mm -hmm. and like doing stuff that that's not, it's the same she thing is going on. Mm -hmm. He's just telling her like, mm, be quiet. Don't say and nothing, what he whatever. what going to run into. She going to keep him on that little, okay, we cool, cool. But no, no, no. Make her moves on and the she side. Gonna, and he going to bump into the moves one day and going to be like, what the? And she going to look. She going to have be, everything. Yeah. Or it's just going to be in your face. One of these influential niggas. You already see, we heard the DM talk. They they communicate with celebrities and all that. I don't give a quick crack. Well, you kind of see what if if this continues, it's gonna yeah, it's gonna blow up. But she's gonna she's gonna learn from all this stuff, and then it's gonna be a lot worse. Like you were saying, the 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 building of what she's doing, if she plays it right, yeah, it could go a lot of ways. Yeah, but I don't, don't want to hate on dude, but dude did not handle black women publicly correctly. Then I saw when he just did that last thing where it seemed like she was uncomfortable every time he spoke about. So what do anything, you think that he should do instead? First of all, what he should it's a lot he shouldn't have done. But I'm gonna go up to what he should have done. At the point when he was sitting on the steps with her and she's sitting there to the side acting like she ain't really feeling him, everything that he brought up, he didn't take no responsibility, no accountability for nothing. He started telling the fans, man, y'all had y'all was telling her I was saying all this, and it's y'all fault she reacted like that. And then she tried to mention it. There's no accountability. Zero. Zero. It's everybody else's fault that things aren't correct except the leader of the ship. So what, sh what can he do to turn this around? If, he can't. He has to accept his fate. It's a wrap. She's gone. She's out of here, bro. It's a wrap. It might not be evident right right now, but that's oh, yeah. she's never gonna be real back in. There's a there's a system of support for women that's struggling, especially at a celebrity level. Man, you don't. Drake might be in her DM right now. That time, he's, <laughs> he's he fucked up. Well, yeah, absolutely. He fucked up. Absolutely. And the way he's been treating her behind closed doors has caused her. But some of the stuff that she, that's what I'm saying, it's back and forth. And I'm not blaming her for, because a, a, a lot of that I felt like was um, retaliation, but not, that's the wrong word to use. Um, you don't blow no female up. If you in love with her or you want her to be your wifey, you don't take her from uh, non-famous to famous. You're creating an enemy. Really? Yes. So if you want it's a not, wife, she can't be a famous wife? Not, she can be if she is. But you can't make her that way. Don't do it. Why not? Because there's a totality in you meeting a certain person when you're going to commit to that extent that means that there's certain energy that I do not have to be introduced to anymore. I'm turning that off. When you take someone that's already established as a public person they're already at a status of access and influence that you come in and understanding that this person is this is what it is dealing with them you're aware of that when you take a person that is not especially if they don't even have those type of aspirations so sure you don't think she had those aspirations beforehand well i can't speak to it but this is a philosophy i've had way before i've been aware of them i would not make it my business to because first of all if i'm attracted to you and you're not um, well known. I may be very attracted to the fact that you're not. That might be a, a strong part. Okay. Because intimate to me and seclusion go together. When I have a very fond eye for any type of possession, it's something that I, I can see that. Yeah. So once you take a person from that, from that intimate, secluded, and just you create the access to so much. Now you're naturally giving them so much more to deal with. So you think it changes their perspective or view to make them act yeah, differently? Damn right. Okay, <laughs> I would just want to make God sure we were on the same God <laughs> same page. Damn right. And I can and I can definitely agree. Just to think, a, you see how you, blue face be going through with the little one. Krishan, yeah. You recently, wow, wow, they was at odds, scheduled to, uh, scheduled to attend a puffy event together. They beefing. She go without him. Do you know how he felt? No, I didn't know how he felt. I'm going to tell I'm... you. <laughs> when you create someone from that to that, and then they have access to exclusivity, 
and your access is denied because you're not getting along with them. You feel like why? Well, why, why didn't he? So wait, he, well, he got denied access just because she went and they she were beefing? She had the invite. So he was going to be her plus one. He was all one. her plus one. So the fact that the time was trying to go, they wasn't quite vibing. She went without him and she was still Did received. he still go? Now, or you know what? Go? I could be wrong about who had the invite. All I know is that she went and was party hardy, had a good time. And did her shit. It was online and all that. And cuz wasn't there. And it, apparently it was because they was beefing. And he wasn't. The way he was going was with her. And the way it was reported was that it's like cuz. See now. Like damn. Just think. Now he has to hold on. You have to hold on to her. Because you know if you don't. She finna be stuck in dick. Here. There. With all these niggas that you but don't. But don't you think that should be a good thing in a sense? Because if you. Because I mean, they're, they're first of all, they're good, they're it's, they're it's a, a good they're thing. a very you should, uh, you should be sending her then. They're, you should be they already doing it then. If they're it's already thing. like a chaos couple already because no, they use always... your word. Use your word. The T word. Yeah, say that. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't hold back. You must, I, you, I see you kind of find that they little get out over there. <laughs> they, they're every Christian and blue face ever. What did she just call it? What kind of couple? Chaos? Chaos, not toxic. It's no, tumultuous? Huh? Yeah, anything but toxicity. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm trying, yeah, I know, yeah. you know. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I, I know you've been aware of the, I don't know all of it, I just see the headlines, but there's been headlines of where I've seen clips like he just beat her up in the street. So I can't And he's believe. decked, she's hit him a few times too, and he's ripped her hair out, and they they constantly, I guess, like she beat up her his mom, and he punched his her dad. Um, first of all, just get out. <laughs> just, yeah. just break up. It's not even worth promoting. He's trying but to pop a baby up her at this point. Yeah. Well, he got his baby mama pregnant for a second baby, and that was another reason why they fought because he was. She was like, "We're he, doing." He wanted to put you... one up in her bad. I know it. <laughs> so she out of here. Watch. She gonna be a big. When fan. she blow, but yeah, she's she out of here. Girl. Yeah. So, but I'm saying like, shouldn't that be? Shouldn't he respect that if she blows up and becomes her own, even if he was the one that led her to it and they may have had a relationship, shouldn't he be mature enough in his mind to be like, okay, if she goes and blows up and does her own thing, all right, cool, I respect it. And she doesn't want to be with me, I respect it. But as long as that mutual like respect of like, you know, uh, cool. you're have, have, to. have be humble where you, you're, you're in your to. beginnings. But you're saying like, that's like, he, he, she's gonna be gone, and like that's like a thing. I'm just like, why? Yeah, if that was your plan or your plot or something that was probable or potential in the plan that you wasn't worried about, so what? Who cares? But if you had a whole nother projection of how this was gonna go, and then you did this not realizing it was gonna change the dynamic, I'm telling you, it's gonna change the dynamic. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because egos yes. get involved. Oh, yes. Especially if you went access. from being, yeah, nothing, and then you have access to everything, and you've been. So secluded for yes. some time? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yes. But can you respect that if you brought me up in this environment knowing that, that you have that you have to give me that leeway? I mean, yes, if I chose to do that. That's yeah. why I would not choose to do so because I would not desire to experience that with someone I've invested that way emotionally. You feel me? Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. <laughs> I concur. Yeah, that's just something I, would, I wouldn't find myself being involved in. However, approaching someone who has already established himself on that uh, type of level, then you're making the decision to deal with that, and that's a whole nother experience. Mm. For me to establish it, and then for me to know the dynamic that it can uh, create and what could potentially lead to us being separate, why would I set myself up for that? Hmm. Well, because you know better now. They're young. Yeah, but I mean, this is a thought that I innately had since young. It's just, I don't, I always felt this way from day one. Like, I would be, I would never blow no, no, not me. Now, I would be involved in blowing a woman up, but not someone that I was considering my Your personal, son. private, intimate partner, life, but if, wife. But if type. you do have a partner, then if she, if you guys do this and you bring her into this life or whatever and she blows up, then shouldn't that be a part of the intimacy is that you 
helped her do this and that's your partner and you guys may have had this intimate little thing it would but be based it would upon be... this conversation being had <laughs> up front and then her saying all these deep things to convince me that she worships me and everything and worship maybe even yeah that's not a word are you guys gonna worship each other it depends I, i'm providing okay let's talk about if it i'm providing what you consider a dream come true who deserves to worship you praise God because He creates blessings. He gives you, yeah. So if I'm gonna do this, if you're blessing me with a house and a home, who deserves the worship? I well, worship. Yeah. I worship the woman I love overtly, just up front. If I'm in love, I'm gonna deem you worship. But that's a different grade of worship. And I so, wasn't saying worship in a demeaning way. Okay, I was gonna say but define your. You have worship. to realize how firm I was in my stance initially, and then I just allowed you to emotionally question me <laughs> past that. It's not an emotional so, question. I was just curious. Okay, well, you Your said, thought process. You, you said it with kind of like some conviction. Like you questioned to the point where you maybe reevaluate the <laughs> possible, potential, probable, ever. And I was just trying to think how extreme. I may have used the wrong word with worship. But I would have to be convinced of some... And, and it might be beyond words. They were words. devoted. Yeah, beyond words. I would have to need. I would yeah, have to that's the, that's where that intimacy yeah. and that personal. You would only know with your wife. But saying that, because that, the question was, is if you guys grew in that, like you helped her blow up, and you knew her from this, and you blew up, wouldn't that make your guys' intimacy and and um, togetherness more deep and more personal? And and wouldn't that be a, actually an extension of? Whatever intimacy you guys have, I guess. I guess I answer that. I mean, you know, you, you, I guess you put the <laughs> thought in my mind for that to be a way it could turn out. However, that is not the way I view it. Okay. Outside of your influence or your input at this moment. <laughs> my but, curious brain picking yeah, yours. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I guess I could run that through my brain, but I just, I just traditionally have often thought that that would be something I would not be uh, eager to do. Ah, interesting. So, so, so like, <laughs> just tell me this. So, okay. The uh, the dude he put her on. Typically, basically, he put her on. Wow. So you telling me? Well, they do got kids or whatever. So you telling me though, if he ain't supposed to feel no kind of way, she out of here. Whoop! And all this high profile. But it would be shit. by his doing. If of he would. Course. So because when like, you, when you, guess what? When I stub my toe, guess who I cuss out? The wall and your toe. Me. <laughs> I say, you stupid, <laughs> dumb motherfucker. I don't cuss my, the wall out, I cuss me out. When I do something that makes me um, suffer, I cuss me out. So regardless if he blames himself, he's going to be blaming himself for some... But like you stated earlier, feeling. he's not holding accountability for himself, so... No, no but it's going to be a... He's not. It's not. It's, he's not. So he may... When she bad. does leave, when she does leave, it's not going to be him blaming himself. He's going to blame her and other That's people. That's going to make it hurt worse. Exactly. I think it starts with him needing to get a hold of his mind and his self reevaluate himself, just like she needs to do some self reflecting as well. But personally, I feel like they could work if they really want their marriage to work and they really want their family. They need to hone it in, hone it back, and calm down and 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 work. On, on stuff with themselves and each other more intimately, like kind of taking the spotlight the out camera, of it, huh? yeah, yeah. Um, for it to work. But if that's if they just want to keep continuing doing them, because I kept hearing that a lot in the videos, well, then go ahead and separate and literally do you. But no, and but understand why, how it got here, why it got here, and learn from that and be better for it. So if you ever end up in another relationship, public or not, that it's different and it's more. Mature. I'm trying to. I'm I trying to see that. I, I see that. <laughs> I'm trying to elevate. I no, don't want to elevate. And, <laughs> and I, I do agree with, in general, that is way it can be looked at. However, in that specific case, what are your final thoughts on it? <laughs> she out of here. <laughs> she out of here. Yeah, most definitely, she's gone. She's out of here. You yeah. created a monster, boy. <laughs> Think twice before you do it again. Oh my, mama, mama, mama. <laughs> yeah, for sure.
Thanks, guys, <laughs> for, <Thank you. laughs> for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Don't forget to like, follow, share, and subscribe to the channel. Oh, Always nice. support us. Go ahead and leave us comments, shout outs of what you guys thought about today's episode. And oh, as always, right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for not. Thank you for uh, doing that little uh, closing. Outro, yeah, yeah, not a problem. And I thank you for coming through again and hold down your side of the table. You know, you're always welcome. Oh, thank you. I look thank forward you. to having you back again. That's of a course. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs>